Um, another little bit of NFL news. Like I said, we're a couple of weeks away from the draft, so free agency has, has, has calmed down. It's not much player movement at all right now as teams prepare for the draft. But one thing that does look like it's picking up some steam is the lawsuit that uh, Brian Flores has against the NFL. Uh, two assistant coaches, one current, one former, have joined uh, that lit- that lawsuit. Um, we got Coach Wilkes out in Arizona. Uh, refresh my memory, Trip. Who, who's the other coach that was on that uh, lawsuit as well? Uh, uh, Ray Horton. Ray Horton, yeah. who have joined the lawsuit against the league, claiming that obviously um, there's discrimination in the hiring process. Nothing new. We, we kind of know that already. But to hear it directly from these guys who are not only on the sideline, but have been employed at some point throughout the league, I think is, is another gut punch for the NFL in this, in this case. Well, yeah, because, I mean, come on, come on, man. We know, we know that, we know, you know, this, this, there would be more, but, you know, you know, for the guys that's actually working right now, you know, it's a little bit hard because at the same time, you know, even though Brian Flores has a job right now with the, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, doesn't mean that if you, if you start going against the machine, that it's going to work out the same way for you. Um, and, and the reason why I say that, and, and Eric, you know, as, as well as me, we saw this with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, we saw him sue the NFL, and we have not seen Colin Kaepernick back in an NFL jersey, uh, you know, since was 2016, I believe it was. Sounds about right. About, yeah, his, his last year. So we do know that if you go against the machine, you are – putting your 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 career on the line if you do that now again fortunately for brian flores you know he was able to be picked up by the by the pittsburgh steelers but that doesn't guarantee it's going to work out like that for you know for everyone but i'm sure there are a lot of coaches that have experienced things you know especially the minority coaches um and i i hope that we see more more of them step up um, obviously not like uh, what's my man name from the uh, from the Browns? We don't need one of one of Hugh Jackson. Yeah, we don't need we don't need to know <laughs> no more Hugh Jackson's messing things up. But I'm sure there are a lot of of coaches, you know, and just ex- maybe even you know GMs, executives as well that probably can can speak to, you know, them dealing you know with with some sort of of, of racism within the system, as to why you know when you look at football and you're talking about a league that's what 75 to 85 percent uh you know black you know in comparison to, to their white counterparts as players and then you go into the the coaches and if you even want to go further into the gms where it's probably 90 percent white and 10 percent minority you know head coaches and, and gms and if you get down to the owners i mean you're probably talking about like 98.5 percent you know uh white you know what i mean owners as opposed to any other type of minority because i think there's like a little asian ownership sprinkled somewhere up in there um but it's just it's just not it's not balanced it's not even close to being balanced and as 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 good as the Rooney Rule was intended to be, there's a lot of loopholes with the Rooney Rule. So, you know, it it, it doesn't guarantee much of anything, because all it all it all it basically guarantees is is interviews. Interviews mean nothing if if you're not intending on hiring that person. No way. No matter how how good, you know, the resume might be, or or or, or what type of potential they could have as a, as a head coach or as a GM, it doesn't matter if you're not planning on hiring, hiring them anyway, we're just going to do the bare minimum to say, okay, well, we checked off the boxes that's required from the Rooney rule. We brought some guys in, you know, but if we do see a situation, you know, where we had with Brian Flores and, and what went down with the giants coaching situation, you know, what do you, what do you, what are you going to do? Because they're going to say, well, we interviewed, you know, some minority candidates, but ultimately we went with this guy. And then, and they'll also have, be able to back it up by saying, you know, what tipped the scales in, in, in that guy's favor was that we, our GM just came from Buffalo. So that's how it goes. You, you want to bring your guys with you. We saw that, you know, we saw that with Byron Leftwich wanting to uh, bring Adrian Wilson uh, with him 
to uh to to possibly take over the Jaguars job. So, you know, there's ways around a lot of this stuff. So, but I, you know, I'm glad that you know guys are stepping up, and I really hope that we see more, uh, you know, former or present coaches step up and not be afraid, you know, to put it on put it on the line. Yeah, absolutely. We got to start there by applauding these guys for being courageous and taking the stand, because as you mentioned, after this, you, you pretty much know without someone telling you, you know, you're never going to be a head coach in the NFL now, right? You went against the machine. You're not getting an opportunity now. So there's that part of it. The other part of it too is, you know, unfortunately, any any field, any any form of big business corporate America is all about connections. It's about who are you close enough to and who have you rubbed enough elbows with to get the opportunity. And Buffalo, as you mentioned, is, is a great example of why Brian Dabo, uh, Buffalo's GM, I should say, going to the Giants, ultimately leading to Brian Dabo getting a job, right? Those guys work together for a few years in Buffalo. So, of course, I get the opportunity who I'm going to I'm call. I'm going to call my man who I already know. I trust him. He gets the job now. And I, there aren't enough black men or black women in positions throughout the NFL to be able to look out for some of their own. There isn't enough GMs. There isn't enough front office types who can say, look, we have a vacancy on our staff. And instead of always going to our white counterparts, I'm going to hire a minority into the spot. Black, brown, you know, whatever. Give them an opportunity in the spot. And I think that's where the real change needs to be. The Rooney rule at, at the essence of it, at the heart of it, yes, was a good idea. But what we really need to see is more minorities in the front office. Because we start to see more minorities in the front office then we'll start to see the trickle down effect of not only more interviews, but then actually more hires of black and brown men and women uh, for head coaching and other coaching opportunities. You know, we know there are plenty of them out there who deserve it. It's unfortunate. Lovey Smith right now, who had a great career as the Bears head coach, who somehow took them to a Super Bowl with Rex Grossman as his quarterback. Right. Uh. He, he he got fired after a winning season in Chicago and then had to take the long way to get back into the NFL. He had to coach in college, then be an assistant coach on an NFL staff. And now he's, he's taken over in Houston, but we're talking 16 years removed since he coached in the Super Bowl that he's getting another opportunity, which is unheard of. If it was a white counterpart, you know, Jack Del Rio ain't never stopped getting jobs. And right? I don't if you ever made it to the Super Bowl as a head coach either. Never. If I'm not so uh, <laughs> no, no, it, right. He's he's been on on staffs that have made it, but not as a head coach. Yeah, but he, he keeps getting exactly. opportunities, right? The Rex Ryan's of the world keep getting opportunities. They keep popping up on people's lists. Hey, you know. Yeah. So, I I think it's unfortunate, but the real change for me needs to be in the front office. If we get the change there, I think we'll start to see an improvement on the actual coaching hires. Here's the thing: I gotta I gotta I gotta go one further than that. We're gonna need changes in ownership because the ownership that's gonna make those calls to put the guys in place in the front office. So we gotta go even higher up the up the food chain for that one. Um, you know, if, if we don't see you know any type of ownership change, it's gonna be hard to say. All right, well, I know these they're definitely gonna bring in some people because. You know, and and I, I again, this the situation that's brewing in Washington right now. We we spoke about this, uh, you know, a, a week ago. Shout out to to, uh, to to Will. Um, but you know, if if you have, yeah, like I feel like every couple of weeks, every couple of months, there's something else going on in Washington. If we finally get to a point where, you know, the league says, "All right, enough is enough," Snyder, you got to go. The the if the league really wants to make a step in the right direction, they need to guarantee that ownership of the Washington Commanders goes to a minority led ownership group. That is the only way that things are go can can begin to change. We cannot make change until we get in the room. Jay Z said it best: "You have to be in the room in order to make that change." So. If we can get that, that would be a start. We, but again, still doesn't change the fact that 26, 20, 20, 28 other teams would not have any type of minority ownership. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's 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 a long road that 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 we're that we're facing here. And I I don't I don't think that the players are willing to say we're not going to play football unless this changes. 
I just don't. I don't. I don't see that happening. Um, if they if they didn't take it, if they if they, if we couldn't get the majority to take a knee with Kaepernick, I doubt the guys are gonna say, "All right, we all as one." And every player in the NFL says we're not going to play football unless there are some drastic changes. And even with that, it's hard that you can't tell because at the end of the day, even though the NFL is a whole. We're talking about individual businesses here. Each team is an individual business owned by an individual. And you can't tell a person who owns the team already who he has to hire. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? So it, 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 that's why I say it's, it, we got a long way to go, Eric. Yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done. And I think you make a valid point, you know, in terms of, that's where the real change needs to be. Because if, if it changes there, then obviously there's the ultimate trickle down effect. Yeah. But as you also highlighted, each team is its own individual entity. And so we can't twist 32 different owners' arms and make them do something, right? We need one or two to stand up on their own and say, no, this is what we're going to do. And obviously you see it in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh didn't have to take a chance on Mike Tomlin when they moved on from Bill Cowher. And then ultimately, they didn't have to bring Brian Flores on that. Brian Flores has a lawsuit against the league. So for them to say, we're going to still take him on, because aside from that lawsuit, we know how great of a football mind he is, and we know what he brings to a coaching staff. We need to have him here. That, you know, again, that's one out of 32 who's willing to do that. Um, as much as I'm against the Steelers, you know, being a Ravens fan, right, I, right. I, I put a lot of respect on their name for, for, for that. Well, I put respect on that, and I also respect what Mike Tomlin said. He said during this time, he understood that Brian Flores is going to be going through a, a, a lot of backlash, a lot of criticism, and he felt like it was easier to be his friend standing next to him and be with him every day than just checking in on him every now and then through his phone and then not really knowing what he's going through. So I respect that too. But NFL is, is going to have a tricky situation on their hands with Washington for a number of reasons. As you mentioned, Dan Snyder might be on his way out. They haven't officially made that known, but with everything that's going on and now that there are issues involving money and revenue sh sharing, they may have to force him out. That might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah. The next part of that, though, is if you're an owner and I'm coming into that situation, black, white, blue, yellow, doesn't matter who you are. My first question is going to be, how is, my, how is this new ownership, me taking over? How will that be impacted by those lawsuits against the actual organization? Because there are a lot of allegations and lawsuits against the Washington football team, or now known as the Washington Commanders, that if I'm the new ownership group, I don't want anything to do with that mess. Dan Snyder's going to have to figure that out before you get rid of him, because if we switch ownership groups, I don't want it to be now that I'm being called into court to speak on behalf of something that took place within the organization that I bought when I wasn't there. Absolutely. So Absolutely. That that's where it gets a little tricky too. And I, and I, again, I would hate for anybody black, brown, black, white, brown, blue to take over that situation. And then now you're stuck with the mess that was created by the previous regime. Um, the players though. And I think it's a great point. You mentioned at some point, the players may have to be the one to put their foot down and say, look, we can no longer move forward until we see more people who look like us in those sky boxes. Yeah. The problem is the NFL has yet to have a black star on that level that could Im impact that type of change. And the NBA, we've been very fortunate to have guys like a Michael Jordan, like a LeBron James, like a Kobe Bryant over the last 30 plus years. Right. I'm not even because before Michael Jordan, obviously you, you had magic, you had uh, Kareem, Julie Kareem. Servin. Kareem was Kareem. very big with social justice during his time. Right. But from the from the Jordan era on, we've had three big enough stars that could put their foot down and force change within the league. And yeah. that's why the, the league has grown so much over those, you know, 40 years. The NFL, because it's a quarterback-driven league and because nine times out of ten, the star is the quarterback. The best players in the league are black. But the biggest stars are all white. Yes. And it's going to take, unless a Patrick Mahomes is willing to put his foot down, it's going to be some, it's going to take some time because, sorry to say it, Tom Brady ain't putting his foot down. No, not at all. Right. 
Joe Burrow is probably not putting his foot down for change. He might stand with the players, but he ain't putting his foot down and saying, I'm not playing next year unless there's, there's, there's more diversity in ownership groups. So that's where the NFL is able to avoid uh, the bad PR of this. Yes. Where we saw in the NBA, Giannis and the Bucks said, we're not playing a game yeah. because of, of police brutality in our streets, in our city, right? And they were able to shut down the NBA for a day yeah. to the point where the, the, the owners had to have a legitimate meeting about, all right, how can we help the players move on from this situation? The NFL doesn't have anybody of that stature that is black that can do that. Great black, black players in the league, but nobody of that stature where if they, if again, if, if Lamar Jackson, who's a star, said tomorrow, I'm not playing until we make this change. Guess what? The Ravens were still going with business as usual. I'm sorry to say it, but that's how they would handle it. Yeah. You know, we the bottom line, they don't they don't have guys that will, you know, like we saw, you know, we we see these guys right before the bubble when everything was going down with George Floyd. The NBA shook the world and showed how much power they have. You don't see that with the NFL. Right. And and even the, the small changes we saw from the NFL were a result of what the NBA did, right? The NBA put Black Lives Matter decals on the court and on the uniforms. The NBA put social justice commercials on their, on their telecast, every telecast. Shortly after, the NFL, at, in the back of the end zone, is when they started to promote Black Lives Matter and equality and all those things. That was a result of the NBA. So... We can't imp- we can't ignore the impact that the star power the NBA has had over every league. Unfortunately, the NFL don't have that. This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. 